So applying for student finance, you can apply through Student Finance England on the gov.uk website. You apply for two types of loan, the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan. The tuition fee loan, this is to cover your fees and you're entitled to the full amount of, of the fees. And what happens is that once you've applied for that, it goes straight to the university or college. So you don't have to worry about writing a cheque or anything like that. When it comes to maintenance loan, that's the bit that you're interested in. That's the bit that's going into your bank account. So again, part of that is means tested. The tuition fee loan is not means tested. So that means it's not assessed on household income. But the maintenance loan is. Part of it you might be able to get entitled to, and the other part is based on your household income. And so this is a bit that you're interested in because this is the bit that's going into your bank account. And what happens is it is divided into three. So you get an amount for a whole year, and it's divided into three, and that's because there are three terms in a year. And what happens is that student finance puts that amount into your account at the beginning of the term, and you have to be responsible for eking it out. So to apply for this, as I mentioned before, you apply on the student finance website, and you can start applying for that as soon as possible. If you apply before the 31st of May, then you are um, guaranteed to get your funding on the first day of the course. However, if you apply after that, you're still able to get the funding. It just might not be there on the very first day of your course. So if you're applying for an access course, you may be concerned about the fees. If you are between 19 and 23, and you haven't had a level three qualification before, so this includes things like A-levels, then you may be entitled to fee remission. This means you may not have to pay fees. However, if you're over uh, 24, or if you have already had a level three qualification, then you may be able to apply for what's called the advanced learner loan. So this is um, from Student Finance England, and it's a, a loan that you apply for online, and this is to pay for the fees. It is non-means tested, which means you don't have to tell anybody about your household income. And once you've applied for it and you start your course, it goes straight to the university or college to pay for your fees. So you don't have to worry about writing a cheque or anything like that. So it will cover the full cost of the fees. So a career development loan could help fund your professional studies. So this is something that you get from a bank. They do have slightly higher interest rates than other student loans. And you can get from 300 to 10,000 pounds. However, the difference between this and another student loan is that you have to repay it a month after you've completed your course. And it's a set amount that you need to pay back and they don't track your household income or anything like that. So you do need to bear that in mind when you get a career development loan, that it is a big commitment. So to apply for a career development loan, you need to contact the National Careers Service on their helpline or go on the internet and they will advise you how to complete the loan. So when it comes to loan repayment, this is the thing that concerns everybody. As it happens, Student Finance England, when they first came out with the loans, they didn't want to call it a loan because they thought it would put off so many people applying for higher education. They wanted to call it a graduate tax because that's what it's more like. So what happens when you've completed your degree course is that the following April, you start paying that loan back, but only if you're earning over 25,000. And it's quite a small percentage of whatever it is that you're earning over 25,000. So for example, I'll give you an example. If you were earning 27,000 pounds a year, a decent salary for a new graduate, what do you think you'd be paying? Only 15 pounds a month. Now that doesn't matter whether you've got a 30 grand loan, a 50 grand loan or a 60 grand loan, you're still only paying that amount because what it's based on is what you're earning. So when it comes to paying back the loan, it's not as arduous as you might think. A lot of people ask me, what happens if I don't ever pay the loan back? The answer is nothing. 
nobody comes after you. If you earn, if you don't earn 25,000, say you work part-time, say you made redundant, you don't pay it back. And after 30 years, whatever's left on that loan is completely written off. Remember when it comes to the access course, if you've got an advanced learner loan for that, then remember that after your degree qualification, your access um, course advanced learn loan is completely written off. So it's not added to your other student loan for your degree. So as I've mentioned, you only start paying back your loan once you're earning over £25,000. And you might think, well, how does the government know this? Well, what they do is it's tracked through HMRC. So what that means in reality is that when you get your pay slip, it will say national insurance, your income tax, and it'll say student loan. So you won't even see that amount of money. You don't have to set up a direct debit. You don't have to pay a cheque or anything like that. It is automatically tracked through HMRC and through tax.